Hey, this is Paul. And I'm sure by now you know the news. Russia invaded Ukraine last night. And if you have been following the news, I'm sure you know that this has been setting up for some number of weeks. And now the event has actually happened. And while it may seem maybe a, a, a bit uh, selfish to purely talk about our investments and our stocks, I'm going to leave the foreign policy stuff for the newspapers, and I'm sure you will get analysis of that uh, every single day on television, on the web. And I'm going to stick to what I know matters to you, which is the stocks that you own as a result of subscribing to our services. So let's start with where we are, and then let's then go to where I believe we are going. Where we are today is that we have had a geopolitical event, Russia invading Ukraine. And I wanna tell you a little bit of my own personal history of having been through events like this, which is that I was an analyst when 9-11 happened and when the US started to go into Afghanistan. I was managing money uh, when the Iraq war happened. Um, and where we invaded uh, uh, Iraq uh, to free Kuwait. And there have been any number of additional other events, and you'll actually see a list of them in the email in which this video uh, is located. And you'll see that if you're willing to just simply look out, actually just a little bit, you'll see that the longer term reaction to these events is to, from the markets is actually positive. And that was my experience uh, after 9-11, when prices really got bit up in a very big way. And then it was also true after the Iraq war got launched. So the initial moment is always a panic of fear. And for sure, you know that the financial media will sensationalize it because they depend on clickbait uh, for you to go and read it. And there will be very little real true forward-looking analysis, because I can tell you from having been in markets for 30 years that the natural instinct is to look backward, to try and form fit whatever has happened today to something that has happened in the past. In other words, something in the past is going to repeat itself. However, the future never works out like that. And so today I want to lay out for you a little bit where I believe our future lies and why I believe we have the absolute pitch-perfect strategy for where it's going which is that the world of having things made in all kinds of different places and then having them put together in a second place and then assembled in a third place and then finally shipped to a fourth place, I believe that that is going to increasingly turn out to be unsustainable because it does depend on countries like Russia following certain rules, countries like China following certain rules, which means that I believe that technology and innovation are going to be the way that we actually look to sort of move away from that old way of doing things. And that means that's our companies. Uh, truthfully, as I was reading last night and thinking about this, the answer to so many of the questions as to how to go about increasing our security so that we are not dependent on other countries is to use technology, to use, for example, 3D printing. Now, I won't get into the investment case for 3D printing. All of you know this already, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a sense of why, while you may not want to hear this today, there is very, very good reason to be bullish, to be optimistic, to be positive, which is that just like no one was prepared for the pandemic, and yet it accelerated the adoption of all of the products and services and technologies of our companies, I believe we're going to have something similar happen again now. And that the reaction is going to be to come in and buy stocks of companies that really can mitigate the risk that really this invasion represents, which is that the globalized world that we have come to depend on to get all of our products and services, that it is long-term unsustainable, and the way out is ultimately through innovation, through technology, through the increasing adoption of America 2.0. In other words, I believe we're going to see another accelerating moment, just like we had in March of 2020. Now, it may take 
a few days, might take a few weeks. However, I believe you will start to see it sooner rather than later. And we own the absolute perfect portfolio for this. So while I know it has been a very difficult 2022 thus far, and the second half of 2021 was quite difficult, I still believe that we are positioned absolutely pitch perfectly for what is going to happen. So try and be strong hands, try and stay bullish, try and stay optimistic, try and stay positive, and make sure to read the email in which uh, this video is in where I also asked the team to include a story from 2008 from dealing with a client where it was a very difficult situation. The client was very emotional. And um, I tell in the tweet that I, he actually went to come and hit me. He was that angry. And I understand that all of you may feel a lot of emotions. However, to make money in the market, we have to keep control of them and stay focused. Stay focused on our mission, our purpose. And I can tell you that having thought about this all night, have spent all night watching prices, reading, thinking about this, I believe we're right. I believe we're going to be incredibly rewarded. And I believe that the stocks that we own, these are the right ones to own and they can go up and go up big. And this is why I am still bullish, still optimistic, still positive. Be strong hands and please look out for the updates where we will be covering the impact of this, this event and what it means for our stocks. Um, uh, across all of our services through the updates. So this is Paul saying bye.